Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Email phishing is one of the easiest methods for hackers to trick people. Email phishing has been one of the primary causes of account compromise, data breaches, malware infection, and most recently, ransomware attacks. Today, I will talk about another phishing email that I got many years ago. To protect his privacy, I changed the sender's name and his email. Everything else remained the same. And you can pause the video to see how many suspicious things you can find in this example. For learning's sake, I will talk about email from top to bottom by looking at pieces of email or parts of email. But in a real situation, if you're suspicious about an email, you can check any piece of the email in any order. Or maybe just one piece, one part of email can make you determine it is phishing email. About the date and the time, ask yourself two questions. One. Was the email sent during the regular business days? Two, was the email sent during the normal business hours? In this example, the day and the time were quite unusual, which raises a red flag. But considering the sender's situation, it was understandable. But it's still weird since the sender wrote an email at 3 a.m. in the early morning. About the sender, asking yourself three questions. If all three answers are yes, it's okay to move on. If any answer is no, you should have reasons to be suspicious. One, do I know the sender? Yes, I do. He is the president of my university. But many phishing emails using important people to get attention. Believe me, every single employee would read any emails from the president of the university or CEO of a company as soon as people get their emails. Two, does the sender communicate with me ordinarily? The answer is no. Is the email Domain correct. The sender used the public domain, gmail.com. I can tell it is phishing just because he using public domain. Sometimes email domain can be faked to fool victims. One method is called email spoofing, which means forging the email header so that the message seems to originate from somewhere different from the actual source. The second method is website spoofing. The hackers can have the website that mimics the URL with uh, alternate characters like st underscore mary.com or stmary.org to mimic uh, stmary.edo which is real domain. Domain spoofing can be tricky. Without checking other parts of email, you can easily fall into the trap. The phishing email subject lines are designed and crafted to catch the eye of victims. A subject line can be anything, but I categorize them into four types. One, urgent or important thing that need you to address immediately. For example, your account will be closed soon. Your credit card was compromised, something like this. Two, too good to be true, like you want a big prize or your salary is raised or anything related to money like payment, invoice, payroll, direct deposit, etc., which is likely to attract your interest and attention. The fourth type, 
reply to, or follow up can be one of the frequently used techniques by scammers. There might be more other types and scammers are becoming smarter and more sophisticated and they would come up with new techniques to get you. Email message. Email message varies, but common sense is important. If you don't participate in any uh, event, for example, you don't expect a big prize or reward. The legitimate companies and institutions would not ask you about your passwords, login information, credit card numbers, SSA, or other sensitive information through emails. This can go on and on. In general, you need to ask yourself several questions if you are suspicious about the email message. If your answer is yes, you should be cautious. 1. Does it use impersonal salutation? Yes. In this example, the email uses hi, just a hi. Considering such an urgent situation and borrowing money from me, the present sounds very rude and casual to address me just by hi. Hi. Give me some money. 2. Does this use intense language with scared tactics? Yes. His money and passport were stolen and he needed money. He was helpless. It was quite a bad situation. 3. Does this ask you to click on a link? Yes. And the link is a Bank of America, not bankofamerica.com Does it ask to open any attachments? Yes, but it has no reason to do so. The email message is about wiring money, a typical phishing scam. Without thinking too hard, I can determine it is phishing. By the way, why the president wanted to borrow money from me in the first place? I am only one of the faculty members. I would be the last person to pop into his head if he wanted someone to wire money. Hyperlinks. Be cautious about any links in the emails. Just because a link says it's going to send you to one place, it doesn't mean it's going to. Any link can be formatted to look like a legitimate link. The link will take you to a fraudulent website. Clicking on the link might download and install the malware to your computer. If you are curious about the link, hover your cursor over it without click on it. Checking the two things about the URL. Is hyperlinks URL different from what it says? If it is different, it is a scam. Does the link begin with HTTPS? If no, you should not click it anyway. Attachment. Sometimes in email, attackers ask you to open attachment. The text could say something like, Please verify your account details, confirm your payment information, or your new policy, just to name a few. Regarding the attachment, ask yourself several questions before you download it. Do I expect attachment in the first place? It is relevant to the email message. What is the file type? If you are curious, hover your cursor over the attachment, you should see the file type. Keep in mind, a phishing email is determined not just by one indicator. We cannot say an email is a phishing email just because the subject line is urgent 
or just because the date and the time are outside the normal business days and the normal business hours. If you have a gut feeling that there's something unusual as you read email, either too bad or too good to be true, don't panic. Or don't get too excited either. Ask yourself, is this a phishing email? If you are suspicious, examine it, analyze it, and synthesize all warning signs. Use your common sense. Treat this email as a fun game. Think like a Sherlock Holmes and be a smart forensic detective. If you are still not sure, just delete the email. It's better to be safe than sorry. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you very much, and see you next time.